प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पल्लपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो हमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो हमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ओमाइरी आर बिलवेड घनश्याम महाराज द पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन आर एट मोस्ट डियर पूज्य गुरुजी डियर संतो and all of you dear hari bhakto jai swami narayan <coughs> this is you are course number 6 for the past couple of weeks there have been much trouble here not only in the united states but in the whole world and due to that there was a minor delay in our course we will continue on as the time progresses but a special address to all of you to pray for all of those who are sick and need help nonetheless pray to bhagwan so that this virus can end early this pandemic can end early and everyone can go back to their regular state this is you as saba 6 we're going to be first conducting a kirtan followed by a satguru gunatyan swamnivat and then a charitram the kirtan is rejo mari aankhladi aage very short kirtan by satguru shri brahmanand swami but <clears throat> there's many many types of kirtans in the sampradaya that are nan santo have composed when bhagwan swami narayan came from his akshardham here he brought his santo and with that he brought he 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 brought many many talented santo in different various fields out of them there is fields of you can say scriptures fields of building temples fields of managing fields of writing books so on and so forth and then there's a field of kirtan bhakti a special field of kirtan bhakti that bhagwan swami narayan had his nansanto compose that no other avatar or incarnation in the past has ever had his disciples compose bhagwan swami narayan did through his nansanto out of them sadguru brahmanand swami sadguru premanand swami sadguru devanand swami these were the leading names of those who develops various kinds of kirtans to please maharaj out of them satguru brahmanan swami was very versatile and had many many skills and talents but his mastery was in the field of kirtan bhakti and from there satguru brahmanan swami exemplifies a type of prayer uh to all of us to exercise which means in short that Maharaj please stay in my eyes when i see you all of my book all of my hunger hunger meaning not physical hunger but hunger of other desires hunger of worldly possessions all breaks because bhagwan's murti according to the vachanamrut has all of the happiness of the five vishes all together nonetheless Bhagwan Swami Narayan states in the Vachanamrut Vartal 16th chapter that when i close my eyes and have the darshan of that murti in akshardham all the 14 realms of this universe become completely you can say dry there isn't that happiness cannot be compared to the 14 realms of happiness here uh, in this universe that's how much bliss is there in bhagwan's murti and that's why brahmanand swami is teaching us to pray 
in this fashion to Maharaj to stay in our eyes. Now, it says eyes, but in reality, this body is only temporary. These eyes are temporary, this nose is temporary, these ears are temporary, everything is temporary. But Brahmanan Swami is talking about divine eyes or Divya Chakshu, we can say. Divine eyes that one's Atma has that can perceive Paramatma or Pushartam Narayan or Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So in short, Brahman Swami is praying, pleading to Bhagwan to stay inside of one's Atma and give darshan of his divine murti so we can eternally stay happy in his bliss. We can keep floating in the happiness, the ocean of happiness in the form of Bhagwan's murti. This is what Brahman and Swami is asking. It's a very short but very effective kirtan that one should learn to sing and from there one's goal of ultimately realizing who God is can be attained through reciting such kind of kirtans. Moving on, Sadguru Shri Gunati Tanan Swamini Vato. This is Prakran 1, Vat number 292. After the great meaning the Ekantik Satpurush becomes Paroksh, leaves his body and returns to Akshradham. Paroksh means leaving his body and returning to Akshradham. Will he continue to take care of his followers like today or not? Swami replied, How is it possible that the great are likely to become Paroksh at all? He may not be seen as he is seen today, but he will take care of us as usual. And if he did not take care, how will the universe continue to function? Sadguru Gunatitan Swami, from his Vato that was compiled by his <clears throat> elite Shishya or disciple Sadguru Sri Balmukun Swami, these Vato. Swami spoke in Junagar, composed of many, many elements, but the two main foundation of his vato conducted of Bhagwan Swami Narayan Sarvopari Panu, Upasana we can say, and of associating, serving, attaching to the Ekandik Satpurush of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. This was Gunatitan Swami's heart. Gunatitan Swami encouraged and very much exercised these kinds of topics to his to the people who he spoke to in front. May it be a sadhu, may it be a hari bhagat, may it be a non hari bhagat. But these were the vato that Sadguru Gunatitan Swami took. And he took them from the Vachnamrut and he also exercised his own vato, which we can understand Bhagwan Swami and staying inside of his heart and inspiring throughout his lifetime. But going back to the vat itself, Swami says that after the Ekantik Satpuru or after the Ekantik Satpurush has become Paroksh. Will he continue to take care of his followers like today or not? That's, this was a question asked by someone in the assembly, a sadhu or a devotee, whoever. Now, let's analyze and understand that the Ekantik Satpurush, who is he, how is he, and what is he here for? Now, who is he? Well, he's like, let's put it in short, easy terms, he's like the agent of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. An agent that is sent down here on this earth to help spiritual aspirants understand who Bhagwan Swaminarayan is, how he is, and after realizing, helping one worship Bhagwan Swaminarayan, and then 
taking them to his akshardham. This is his whole duty or task. Now, he's here, he's here to help us understand Bhagwan Swami Narayan and remove our swabhavs and natures or maya in, which is surrounded our soul which is called the Karan Sarir. Now the Ekantik Sat Purush obviously he has to come here he has to also live in a manner which is of a human may it be eating, sleeping talking, walking everything he has to do according to a human because he has to keep the cycle of life continued and not let it break at all for that reason for that very reason many many we can say 99.9% .9 of the souls misunderstand or cannot understand who why and for what reason the Akantik Satpurush is here on this earth for? They're, they become misguided through their sopaos. They become misguided through their lack of capability of understanding. They become misguided due to Kusang. And due to that, they cannot reach Akshardham. But the Akantik Satpurush, when he comes on this earth as a human form, he takes care of his followers there. He gives them many, many spiritual discourses which will benefit their life and which will give them spiritual strength enough so that they can reach Akshardham. But what happens when the Akandik Satpurush leaves his body and goes back to Akshardham. What happens then? So the question is, when the Akandik Satpurush becomes Paroksh, meaning leaves his body, will he continue to take care of his followers? Now Swami's reply is, how is it possible that the great are likely to become Paroksh at all? Swami reverted with asking a question back and saying, how is it possible? Now, for a regular person, a person who has, you can say, intelligence on beyond not understanding that, you know, when we leave this body, that's it. It's going to be burned away. It's going to be buried in the ground. It's going to be put at sea, whatever. All these things are possible you can say assumptions that we can make but the Satpurush is divine the Satpurush has a body but it's divine we may see it today and we may not see it tomorrow but divinely in our Atma in our soul along with Bhagwan Swami Narayan the Ekantik Satpurush is always there shadowing us he is always there looking after us. May we know it, may we not know it. And how can we check? That's the that's the proof, you know. Each and every soul wants some kind of proof. Some kind of proof that this is real and this is false. Proof that this is white and this is black. Proof so that this is the this is a principle and this is just a theory. How can one check that the Satpurush is not become Paroksh, has not disappeared, he is with us, he is looking after us, how can we check? Well, every day when we wake up, till we go to sleep at night, that span of 16 hours, 18 hours of daytime, that we are completely awake. We experience a motivation or an inner voice, an inspiration to do puja, to do more bhajan bhakti, to worship God, to listen to kathavarta, to read scriptures, vachnabrut, swamini vato, so on and so forth. All these types of motivation that we receive inside of our heart 
that's just not due to us becoming spiritually centralized but that's due to an invisible force in the form of the Satpurush encouraging us giving us his words giving us some kind of message to to do this and when this happens then we decide that oh yeah I should sing a kirtan in front of Bhagwan. I should read the Vachnamrut, I should do puja every day, I should become more God oriented, I should follow the niyams of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, so on and so forth. All these different sankalps or thoughts occur. That's our proof that the Satpurush is with us. He has not gone away from our heart. Just like how Bhagwan is with us, the Satpurush is also with us. That can be shared and that can be told. And that can be understood only through one's experience. It cannot be just mere, you listen and you understand that, oh yeah, Satpurush is with us. But by such experience, one can understand that he is not Paroksh, he is there, he is with us. Swami continues, he may not be seen as he is seen today, meaning in the human flesh form. But he will take care as usual. This is his promise, you can say. This is his, uh, you know, his his uh, his sheer daya or compassion upon us. And if he did not take care of us, how will the universe continue to function? According to the Vachnamut Gadada, first chapter twenty-seven, Bhagwan Swami states that. In, in the legs of that such a Satpurush who he characterized before in that Vachnamrut with such characteristics, Bhagwan walks through in his legs, Bhagwan works with his hands, Bhagwan looks through his eyes, Bhagwan listens through his ears. Such a Satpurush, such a great Ekantik Sant is the is the beholder or is the you can say sustainer of the universe such a satpurush in our heart he can only be he can only keep us with us and he can only understand that a satpurush's life is for the soul now there's a charitra on Sadguru Ramanan Swami and Sadguru Muktanan Swami that proves to us that the Sadguru is never Paroksh, has never gone away. He is always with us, just like how Bhagwan Swami Narayan is with us in our heart. The Sadpurush is with us in our heart. This is the Charitra of Sadguru Shri Muktanan Swami in his life. So I would like to share it with all of you today. After the passing of Ramanan Swami, Muktanan Swami and a few sadhus arrived in Bhuj with the purpose to spread satsang. So Ramanan Swami had gone to Akshardham, so Muktan Swami and other santos decided to come to Bhuj to spread satsang. At the same time, sorrowful conditions existed due to Raman Swami's disappearance. All the devotees were feeling regret for Swami's sudden departure. However, in the vast and ever-flourishing Holy Fellowship, Raman Swami had taken place in everyone's heart as the Supreme Lord. At that time, before Bhagwan Swami Narayan or Nilkan Verni or Sajan Swami was introduced to the picture, everyone believed that Ramanan Swami was the Supreme Lord Himself. He was the God of Gods. So as to relieve the satsangis of this, Sri Hari traveled through villages with sadhus and reached Mangrol. Sri Hari desi desired to do something new in satsang. He started Samadhi Prakaran a chapter of leading people into trance. Samadhi is something that cannot be attained by an ordinary human or even yogis that have been practicing for hundreds and hundreds of years. But it's something sheer that Bhagwan, when he desires, he can put someone into Samadhi. But it's a, it takes a long time and there's much practice that's needed. But Sajanan Swami or Bhagwan Swami Narayan one of his points of supremacy that we can understand is that he put devotees, non-devotees, 
animals, birds, insects, you can say fish, into samadhi with a snap, into trance where they would their atma would experience the bliss of akshardham but just by a snap of his fingers. And then again when he would snap, then they would come back. And, but come back into consciousness. This was the kind of elite power that Bhagavan Swaminarayan beholds and he actually portrayed and displayed to his santos and devotees here on earth. Now he he started Samadhi Prakran to establish true upasana by revealing his immense power of godliness. It quickly became a miracle not only in Mangral but also in other villages. People could realize the greatness of Sri Hari through such trances. Children, youths, and even the elderly observed the divine abode of God and witnessed the supreme personality of Sri Hari surrounded by numerous muktos. After returning from such a trance state, they would reveal to the others what they saw. People knew the facts and took the shelter of Sri Hari and understood him to be supreme God of gods. This led to a joyous, peaceful, and divinized period in the satsang. When Muktanand Swami, a foremost saint amongst the sadhus, heard about the Samadhi Prakran, he initially felt it was wrong. Immediately he went to where Sri Hari was staying. Muktanand Swami, knowing, that, knowing it to be a hypocritical action, said, Maharaj, all these matters about samadhi are hard to fathom. Samadhi is not possible without practicing the eight fold of, folds of yoga, which are extremely difficult to carry out in a perfect way, even by great yogis. Raman Swami never showed his power in this manner. So Muktan Swami is kind of a little upset. From this paragraph, we can understand that he's not feeling it. He's thinking that, you know, Sajan Swami just came into the picture. Raman Swami was pretty much revered to be God at that time. Sajan Swami comes in as a newcomer and, you know, starts to put people into Samadhi. That's not very practical. This is what Muktan Swami is kind of role playing and thinking in his head. Now, may I remind all of you that this is a sheer, sheer drama. It's just a role play that Muktan Swami and Maharaj and Raman and Swami and all those involved had already decided before ascending or before descending from Akshardham to here on this earth. It was kind of like a setup. But from this setup, these charitras kind of became a focal point in the hearts of those who needed to develop niche or faith in Bhagwan Swaminarayan at that time and even today for those who read. But Muktan Swami is not feeling it. He's saying this Sajan Swami he's good and all. He answered all those questions. Um, you know, or I, I answered all his questions and he became very pleased. Uh, we lived in lodge with Muktan, uh, with Raman and Swami and him. Everything is all well and swell, but this samadhi, only great yogis who practice the eight folds of Ashtang Yoga can reach this or they may not reach it. And this Sajan Swami is just snapping his fingers and putting people into samadhi. That's not very practical or ideal. This is what Sadhguru Muktan Swami is thinking. With such kind of feeling in his heart, Muktan Swami continued, Even though you all know the true value of satsang, how can you sorely trust what you see in Samadhi Prakran to be the complete truth? So he's questioning the, the people who have gone into Samadhi or you know, who are projected to go into Samadhi, that how can you trust what you see there? How is it real? Are you sure? Is it true or is it not true? Is it kind of like magic? Is it kind of like hypnotism? What is it? Within a while, Sant Dasji, a sadhu, came to Sri Hari. He looked at Sri Hari and lost consciousness. Though Sri Hari called him, Sant Das did not get up. Sri Hari smiled and said to Muktan and Swami, Swami, see, I did nothing. But with the grace of Raman and Swami, everyone could see God's abode in Samadhi. See, 
now Maharaj is playing a little role. Maharaj is saying, I'm not doing anything. If I was, then when I call Sandas's name, why isn't he getting up? What's going on? You know, and and, and it's not to, to, due to my grace, but it's due to Ramanand Swami's grace that he actually went into Samadhi. So in reality, let's just let's just put everything in reality. It's all Raman and Swami is doing, not mine. That's what Maharaj is portraying to Muktan Swami. Muktan Swami kept on staring at Sandasji. He knew that the, he knew that the endeavors which are required to achieve samadhi were never practiced by Sandasji. But how did he reach such a high spiritual state without any practice? This is what was bothering Muktan Swami. Sri Hari told Muktan Swami to wake up Sandasji, but he could not do so. When Sri Hari uttered his name, Sandasji immediately got up and explained what he observed in Samadhi. Sri Hari was seated on a throne in Akshardham, and countless muktos, including Raman Swami, were worshipping to Sri Hari. Then I went to Raman and Swami, bowed down to him. And Raman Swami told me that Sajan Swami is the Supreme Lord of Lords. Muktan Swami was lost in deep thought. In the evening, Muktan Swami walked towards the jungle, barefooted with tears in his eyes. Now, here's what the scene picks up, or the climax. Sandasi was interviewed by Muktan and Swami. Sandasi gave a true fact of what he saw and how he saw Sajan Swami, that Sajan Swami which was on earth, that very Sajan Swami sitting on a throne in Akshardham in divine light with countless mukto and there Sadguru Ramanan Swami worshipping and praying and serving Sajan Swami. Now Muktanan Swami, he is playing a role so he's obviously going to be like, oh this is just all wrong. Is Raman Swami God? Is Sajan Swami God? What's going on? Just a role. Because how do we know that it's just a role play? After this whole Prasangar incident, the moments, the Prasangs, the experiences that Maharaj and Muktan and Swami go through with one another show that their relationship was not only of this earth or that short period of time, but was from Anadi Kaad or from endless time. Because just like how Maharaj is forever, his Anadi Mukto, Sadguru Sri Muktan Swami is forever. There is no doubt in that. But here Muktan Swami is all teared up and he walks into the jungle and he doesn't know what to do. He's confused. He wants Sajan Swami to stop. He wants Sajan Swami to stop putting people into Samadhi in such an easy way. And he wants under, to everyone to understand that Raman Swami is God. We can say informally. In the evening, Muktan Swami walked towards the jungle, barefooted, with tears in his eyes. He suddenly stopped at one of the trees. At once, he heard a familiar voice, O Muktanand, O Muktanand. Hearing such loving words in such a solitary place, Muktanand Swami was startled. As he looked back, he saw his guru, Ramanand Swami, who was dressed in white garments. The luster of his presence filled the jungle with light. His hands were long enough to reach his knees. His face was beautiful with a divine touch. Muktan Swami's joy had no bounds. He prostrated upon, he, upon having Guru Raman Swami's darshan. Then Raman and Swami said pleasantly, My son, I know very well you know me as God, but in reality, your disturbance is due to what people are seeing in Samadhi. Muktan Swami was filling his heart with the immortal words of Ramanan Swami. Did you forget that I repeatedly had said that I am only a drum beater, but the real hero is Sajan Swami. He is the cause of all causes, the God of all gods, the Supreme Lord. For him, nothing is impossible. As the sun gives light to the world, it is not a matter of astonishment. 
Likewise, Sajan Swami is giving the knowledge of God, therefore there is nothing to be surprised about. He can do anything because He is God. As the ocean contains the water of each river, likewise Sajan Swami possesses the power to emerge in all incarnations and has the ability to submerge them back into His divine form. In addition, rose such a flower, rose is such a flower which gives sweet fragrance to everyone, regardless of the person's caste or status. It does not distinguish between anyone. Similarly, whoever sees our Sajan Swami achieve Samadhi, there is no difference of caste in the realm of His grace. These words were enough to vanquish Muktan Swami's doubt, which in reality he did not have. Again, I'm saying it's just a role play. Muktan Swami understood that Sajan Swami is the Supreme Lord Himself. He was extremely happy. Subsequently, Raman Swami vanished. Now, Going back to this Swami Nivato, Ahari Bhagat had asked that, you know, does the great Ekantik Satpurush become Paroksh? Meaning, when they leave this body, do they leave it forever? And, you know, are they gone? Are they, do they vanish where they never come back? Or will they take care of their followers? And Swami countered back by saying, How is it possible that the great are likely to become paroksh at all? They may not be seen as today, but they will take care of the soul. And we could see that through Sadguru Muktanan Swami and Sadguru Ramanan Swami's prasang or incident here. Raman Swami had passed. It had been a long while, maybe a month plus. But Muktanan Swami, his faith in Ramanan Swami, Muktanan Swami, his depression, his moodlessness, and his remembrance of Guru Ramanan Swami enabled and activated Ramanan Swami to come and give darshan to Muktanan Swami in the jungle there and give him a true guiding light with his words. And through that, Muktanan Swami understood that what Ramanan Swami was saying is the truth and Ramanan Swami is not God but Sajjanan Swami, Bhagwan Swamiran is the supreme causes of causes, the Lord of Lords and from there this Charitra goes on and then Muktanan Swami performs the Aarti Jaya Sadguru Swami for the very first time in the village of Kalwani after this prasang occurs and ever since that time, we sing the Aarti today. But, in short, there is many, many prasangs of our Puja Guruji and our Dada Guruji. Where Dada Guruji has given darshan in, to Puja Guruji in his dreams, or even while conscience. And those prasangs will be shared in the future. But, such kind of prasangs where the Satpurush never leaves the Mumukshu ever. The Sadguru, Sadpurush is always invisibly giving support to each and every spiritual aspirant who has taken refuge to him, who has faith in him, and is taking care of him through giving him more Dharma, Bhakti, Gnana, Vairagya, Mahima, helping him understand Bhagwan Swaminar and who he is, how he is, how great he is. And he will always do this until that Jiyo reaches Akshardham and even in Akshardham that Satpurush take, takes care of that Jiyo until that Jiyo reaches the Anadi Mukta level. This is how precious, valuable, great, remarkable of an asset the Ekantik Satpurush plays in the role of spirituality in the role of Swaminarayanism, in the role of reaching Akshardham. That's why one needs to attach oneself to the Ekantik Satpurush in order to re reach Akshardham. This is a principle stated in the Vachnamrut. This is a principle stated in Sadguru Gunatitam Swamini Vato. And this is a principle stated in even Sadguru Sri Gopan Swamini Vato. So from this, 
our short but sweet message is that the Sadhguru is never vanished and is always taking care of his spiritual aspirants and through that the spiritual aspirant can reach Akshradham but there is no need to worry and there is no need to feel that after after the Sadhguru has left the human body he is not there with us he is always with us just like how Bhagwan is with us in our uh, Atma so understand this Vat in this way and followed by that there is a Charitra of Becharbhai of Memdavad that one can understand uh, how Sri Ji Maharaj took care of them and how how Nishe, <clears throat> our faith Becharbhai had uh, in Sri Ji Maharaj this is U.S. Sabha course 6 again please take care of yourself stay isolated and stay home and uh, also promote that to others as of right now this virus is accelerating and for a short period of time if we just listen and take care of uh, this virus this virus and listen to the rules then it will dim down and i want to add also that the principles that bhagwan swaminarayan has stated and the principles of hinduism of not shaking hands and bowing down uh, of <clears throat> of uh, washing your hands frequently 17 times after you go <clears throat> to the toilet all these different kinds of rules of do's and don'ts that Hinduism and Bhagavan Swamran portrays in his religion are remarkably playing a very very vital role as of right now and we can see that many people are now instead of shaking hands starting to fold their hands in front and bow instead of shaking hands proving that those principles which were implemented and put out thousands and thousands of years ago are now actually becoming a reality here on this earth proving that Hinduism and Bhagwan Swamiran's principles are true and, and they are worth following Saying this, my humble Jay Swami Narayan.